Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kamini Gadhok, and I'm Chief Executive at the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists. Joining me on the webinar this afternoon are Maria Lescombe, who is the Chair of the Board of Trustees. She was also the Chair of the Steering Group for CQ Live, and Penny Hodgkinson, who is a member of the CQ Live Steering Group and has been heavily involved in supporting us in developing the guidance. So I'll talk you through a little bit about how the webinar will work in a minute. It's going to be 45 minutes long with questions at the end. For those of you who've been involved before, but particularly for those who've never been involved in a webinar, these are just a few top tips. If you want to send in a message through the chat messaging process, please do so by using the chat button. That's particularly for Kaylee in case you've got any problems in hearing what's said or any other technical issues that she might be able to help you with. Also, do send in some questions by using the Q&A button. We will have 10 minutes at the end for questions. We are aware that some of the slides do contain quite a lot of detailed information. So just to reassure you, this webinar is being recorded and will go online with the slides about a week after the event. And there's a link onto the website there on the slide. And again, we'll make sure that we get this out as soon as we can. So just to remember that Kaylee is on hand to help. We'd also like you to tweet if you can. And the hashtag being used is hashtag CQ Live. So in terms of what we're going to be covering, Maria Lescombe will provide an overview of CQ Live, the journey we've been on to co-create it and how it will continue to develop. Penny will then highlight a typical problem that many of you may face, and she'll use that to show you how to navigate through the CQ Live web pages. And as I said earlier, there will then be an opportunity for questions. So I'm now going to hand you over to our first speaker, and that's Maria Lesko. Over to you, Maria. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our CQ Live webinar. It gives me great pleasure to introduce this new tool to you and to take you through the journey we've been on to create it. First of all, how do you find out about CQ Live? If you go on the RCSLT website, you will see that CQ Live has its own section on the website. You can click on there and you will be entering the web pages around CQ Live. So what is CQ Live? It's a set of RCSLT guidance and resources to support members to meet the standards of the regulator, the Health Care Professions Council, or HCPC. It is structured around 10 key areas of professional practice and advice, which you should now see in front of you. It's relevant to all members, no matter where we work. And the 10 key areas Penny will refer to further as we progress with the webinar. Within each area, members will find the relevant HCPC standards, the related or CSLT guidance for speech and language therapists, supporting resources including detailed information on topics, for example, information governance, the use of apps or inclusive communication. You will also find other relevant or CSLT resources through links. For example, you'll be linked to the research centre, clinical resources, and different clinical resource packs around, for example, autism, stroke, etc. So, just to take you back a few steps to where we started out, we needed to find a replacement for the little blue book that we all knew well as CQ3. And to do that, we needed to move into the digital age and evolve the profession and our environment. The RCSLT guidance on the CQ Live will be available as downloadable PDFs and can still be printed off. For, so for those of you who like the book format, it's still there, be it in a different way. When we started out, 
on this journey, we had a number of challenges. We knew that CQ3 uh, needed updating. For example, it wasn't always linked to the most updated national policies. It assumed typical management or service structures, which many of us no longer work in. There was issues around support, supervision, duty of care. And we knew that in some ways it didn't fit with our RCSLC organizational structure. So we wanted to create an approach that would support all the profession, no matter where you work or within which sector. We wanted to tap into the professional community to feed in and share good practice, provide a safe but flexible framework that would evolve with the profession and its environment and continue for it to be high quality, but easier to keep up to date and more accessible and to support us um, to use our professional judgment as autonomous practitioners. We engaged a company called Clever Together who helped us to um, engage the, our harness, the power of the crowd using technology. And we engaged the profession through two online workshops. Using this, we were able to engage more people in the process than ever before and within a shorter time scale. You will see from the results in front of you that many of you did contribute. Over 1,700 members contributed. We had over 10,000 contributions. You will see that geographically we had a good spread of participants and also it is reflective, I think, of the areas within which our membership now work the NHS, independent sector, universities, and uh, voluntary and other sectors, and across the whole field of adults and children's services. We recognize that a growing number of practitioners in some areas of the country do work in independent practice, and we wanted to support all members through this website and through this tool. We made an active decision to mainstream working in harmony. We learned that there were differences of opinion, but that we could work in harmony to resolve these and to come up with some solutions. So CQ Live will embed the principles of working in harmony right across the relevant areas of practice. So what I would like to say, the quality of the input was overwhelming from everybody. People were so committed to the project, they took substantial time out of their working day or outside their working day to respond. And the comments were really professional, responsible and thoughtful when navigating complex issues. I think what it also showed us was that the profession cares deeply about service users. There was a huge emphasis on our person-centered approaches and advocacy. And we know we do our very best to represent service users, even when this can potentially bring us into conflict. So what did you tell us? You told us that you wanted information and guidance around various topics. Some of those are already on the website, for example, information governance, but others will follow such as supervision, telehealth, apps, inclusive communication should be available by the end of June, and others will follow. I'd like you to take a look at this slide because I think it represents um, what CQ Live is all about. You as a professional have to abide by the HCPC standards and the HPCP code of ethics. RCSLT is there to provide you with guidance, with clinical guidelines, but it will be up to each of us as practitioners to then interpret what that means to your particular context, because that's what the HCPC expects from us as autonomous practitioners. So RCSLT will help members to translate into practice. We won't be able to find solutions for everyone, but we will provide guidance, tools, links and assistance and be there to answer your questions as best we can. What we need you to do, though, is to continue your contribution. This isn't something that is now finished. CQ Live will continue to grow and we will continue to provide more uh, support as necessary as we go along the journey. So we need your feedback. You can do this by using CQ Live, sharing practice with your SENS or other networks and help us to develop the new content from the CQ Live as an author or a peer reviewer. And you can see the link here 
or equally so, you can get involved more by going onto the CQ Live webpage and clicking the link there. I would encourage you to continue the great involvement that you've had to date with this worthy project. And I now hand you over to Penny. Thank you very much, Maria. I was privileged to be part of the CQ Live steering group. And in that role, I had an insight into the tremendously rich and varied discourse of all your contributions to the crowdsourcing activity. And so I hope very much that what we're showing you now reflects just how rich and strong as a community we are in developing our professional guidance. What I'm going to do now is take you through some screenshots of how you will encounter Communicating Quality Live, CQ Live, when you click on that link on the website. This screen shows you the front page. So it's very much the welcome, the doorway into this resource. And as such, it starts by setting out the overarching guidance that we have from our regulatory body. So you will see there that the HCPC standards of conduct, performance and ethics, the standards of proficiency, the standards for CPD and the standards for education and training are available to you as links to click through so that you can remember that wherever you work, you are judged as a health professional by the HCPC and it's them who will consider whether your practice meets or falls short of the relevant standards. CQ Live sets out the guidance and good practice to support the regulation and to function within the legislative frameworks that apply to us as health professionals. It's our professional guidance. We're expected as autonomous professionals to make informed and reasoned decisions about our practice to ensure we're meeting our regulatory standards. And we may need to seek out advice from our professional body, from employers, colleagues, education providers and others to ensure that we're meeting those standards and safeguarding the well-being of those who use our services, which was paramount in the feedback you gave in the development stages. If you can do this and justify your decisions and your actions, then it's very likely you'll be meeting and maintaining the standards needed. So CQ Live is to support you in that decision-making and reasoning process. If you look at this page, you'll see that the blue box on the left-hand side sets out a number of topics using CQ Live hot topics, CQ Live scenarios, the 10 areas of standards that relate directly back to the HCPC, and then the resources A to Z and the link for how to get involved. The user guide is exactly what it says. It takes you through how you can use CQ Live in a variety of ways. The hot topics are issues that are especially pertinent for you. They will change over time. They'll reflect the pressures, the demands and issues which challenge us as a profession. We are our own community of practice working in an ever-changing health, education and social care landscape. So we are our own resource of good practice we support each other and we innovate. The next label is the CQ Live Scenarios. And these are case studies developed from ideas that you've brought us, which will help you work through and stimulate your own thinking, your development needs around how you can live the standards. We're going to look at one of these in just a moment. Each scenario is available as a working document. You can download it as a PDF. You could use it as a team tool and it contains sections for you to think about, your own critical thinking on the topic, next steps, and then the prompts that will take you to the different resources and guidance. The next screenshot takes you into the CQ Live scenarios. In essence, it's a CPD resource. It takes a problem that arises from everyday working practice and asks you to think about what you need to critique, what steps to take, and you can use it in a variety of ways. Some of these were generated last year at the National Conference, and the topic groups there provided some very innovative and creative thinking around these areas. They're very much a reflective prompt for you to think about your practice and to support your critical reflective thinking and to help you by signposting you to relevant material professional guidance and other resources. They do link to clinical guidelines, but you will need to source those 
through the clinical guidelines section of the website. The sorts of topics we've looked at in these scenarios include confidentiality, delegating effectively, the use of social media, supervision, being an expert witness, and many others. We invite all hubs and SENS to hold a session at their next relevant meeting, looking at the CQ Live scenarios to help you share your experiences around the subjects that you're encountering in your professional life, to help you understand the HCPC standards, and then the national frameworks and structures within which they work and how they're applied to their own practice. We invite you to explore the CQ Live site together and collate some feedback which you can send back to us. Doing this, you'll be carrying out some quality CPD. Once you've completed any of the scenarios, whether as an individual or in a team, you can update your CPD diary and you can send your feedback in to us as college. So now let's have a look at one of the scenarios. So imagine you've clicked on that link and you've clicked on the scenario that says you've just started a new job and you're not sure what records to keep. So this topic is a perennial question. Over the years, record keeping has changed. We use a variety of methods, paper, electronic, different systems and different organizations. We have many more electronic tools to record, store data. We're transferring data in increasingly diverse ways. It's important to remember that wherever we work, it's the HCPC standards that guide us. There is additionally legislation that we must be aware of. If you work for a large employer, they might have training around the area of legislation and their own policies and protocols. But we come back to that as health professionals, we abide by the HCPC standards, and these apply regardless of the context in which you work. So you have this scenario to think about. You'll be thinking about it in terms of the standards, what college as your professional body provides in the way of guidance and resources, local, national policies and legislation, and your employment policies, whether that's a large employer or your own policies if you're practicing independently. The CQ Live scenario endeavors to take you through a thinking process to help you with that. So you click on record keeping as number 10 in the professional guidance and immediately you're taken to a screen that shows you where you can link to the relevant HCPC documentation and also there are links there for RCSLT guidance to support you and then another link to take you to the specific RCSLT resources. And bear in mind that these may cover a number of different areas depending upon your question. You click on HCPC standards. And here on this screen, you can see this tells you what you need to do. This is what the HCPC expect of you. It sets out the standards from the Conduct Performance and Ethics Code, the standards of proficiency. So it's very, very clear this is the um, set of standards by which you will be judged. And record keeping is something that comes up at the HCPC from time to time to be looked at in terms of how different professionals are managing it. So it's always worth starting with what is absolutely a must. And it's quite clear there that the, the guidance about what you need to do is very clear and it will apply wherever you're working. So you've familiarized yourself with what is absolutely required. Then you click through to have a look at the guidance from us, your own professional body, guidance which you've contributed to and which is informed by the speech and language therapy community. So there are a set of statements there, all of which link back to the HCPC standards, but they give you some very clear guidance about what is expected. And there are a number of ways in which you might choose to use those statements. You could use them perhaps as an audit. You could use them to inform writing a policy if you're a small or independent uh, practitioner. Their guidance there to support you to live the HCPC standards. And if you can apply those in your day-to-day -day work, then it's very likely that you'll be meeting what is required. They're there to underpin the implementation of the HCPC standards. You click through then to have a look at what the resources are. And you see that there are actually many different resources there 
that relate to record keeping in a variety of ways. I'm really pleased to say that today the guidance about information governance is now live. And if you were to click on the resources A to Z, you would find that there are a variety of tools there that you can use to find your way about different ideas around information governance. And they include things like the national legislation. So that would take you to issues like the Data Protection Act, it would take you to information about confidentiality, it would take you to key people, key organizations that might be helpful for you. So that might be something that after this webinar, you want to go away and explore. Going back now to the, the actual slideshow, you've clicked through and you've had a look at all those different resources. Perhaps you've discussed them in supervision session or in a group scenario. And what you're going to do now as a new speech and language therapist in your job is you're going to find out from your employer about what their record keeping policies are. If you're self-employed, you're going to think about whether you have an appropriate policy whether you need to develop one. You can use the resources to check that what you're doing aligns with the HCPC standards. And CQ Live will signpost you to all sorts of national frameworks, guidance, resources, documentation that will inform your thinking. And you can use this to start a conversation with your employer, with your team. And again, if you're self-employed or working independently, you can use this to inform how you develop your policies, your protocols. As I said, you can download the clinical scenario, the CQ Live scenario, and there are many more examples on there which you might want to browse through that will take you through some of the contemporary issues we all face with the use of social media, that will take you through some of the challenging conversations we might have to have about managing our caseload and discharging children, adults, about the clinical reasoning, the clinical decision making. I hope that's given you some insight into how the CQ Live pages operate, starting with the HCPC standards and working through the guidance and then onto the resources, and that you'll be able to have um, a good look around all the different pages and start to use them as of now. I will now hand back, I think, to Kamini because we've got time for some questions. We had some coming in, I think, but also any more that came in before today. Okay, thank you very much to both Maria and Penny. And as Penny said, we did have some questions that were submitted prior to the webinar. And I'm just going to use those just to kick us off. And of course, if people who are listening in would like to pose a question to the panelists, please do use the Q&A button to submit your question. So one of the questions that we had submitted prior to the webinar was, will CQ Live include the information from What Works? And What Works has been set up by the Communication Trust. Uh, so the question is, will it include information from What Works to support us with our much needed evidence base for commissioners? So Maria, what was your thoughts on that? Hello. Well, my thoughts are, first of all, that CQ Live are dealing with our standards, but there will be other sections of the website which will certainly refer to and point us to research. The clinical pages will point us to various clinical guidelines and standards around specific groups of patient groups or perhaps working in schools or whatever. So they, it will point us through through to um, other resources that are available. And I do know that certainly the What Works website will be signposted as, as part of the uh, children's work that we're doing. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, now a question for Penny. I think you touched on this a little bit, but specific question, does the guidance reflect the changing nature of digital working in healthcare for example, use of social media, Skype, etc. Thank you, Kamini. Yes, this was very topical and was certainly one that came up at the conference last year. And some of our CQ Live scenarios do actually deal with issues like YouTube, use of Facebook um, and other social media. Specific guidance has been developed for the use of telehealth apps, social media, and this will be available on the CQ Live site by the end of June 2016. 
it's also worth mentioning that there is guidance around social media usage on the HCPC website and indeed today I think they opened a consultation on the use of social media. So look out for detailed guidance to support the HCPC standards that will be coming by the end of June 2016. Thank you Penny. Now we've got a question from one of the listeners. She said, hello, I am sat with my SLT colleagues and we have a question. Are there any minimum standards in CQ Live, e.g. supervision that we could use with discussion with managers? I'm not sure if we've got to that point of development, but any thoughts on that? I think we have our specific guidance, certainly for newly qualified practitioners, and the current guidance around supervision is being revised um, as we speak. It will be one of the guidelines produced. Yes, um, this is Penny speaking. I think it's important to remember that the, the standards come from the HCPC and the guidance that our professional body gives us are in addition to the standards. So firstly, check the standards in the HCPC around supervision, which it certainly is there. Um, and then there will be some guidance that's in the process, I think, of being finally peer reviewed. But there will be some professional guidance that you can use to talk to your managers or others around what is required. But always refer managers back to the HCPC and then the professional guidance from the Royal College in addition to that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope that that's helped to answer that question. We have had a number of questions about the fact that CQ three there were different sections and categories and I think Maria has explained that we've decoupled um, CQ3 into what actually its core business is which is supporting our members to meet the standards set by the HCPC and the fact that a lot of the clinical elements of work are now sitting elsewhere in the website so I hope that we've also answered another question that was submitted prior to the webinar as uh, on that particular topic. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions being submitted at the moment. Um, I'll give those who are listening another few minutes to just think about uh, a few questions. Oh, we've got another one that's come in. So I understand that CQ Live will be updated regularly to reflect current policies, etc. Will practitioners be sent alerts about the updates or notifications? I think in response to that, yes, we will be looking at ways of alerting our members when new information goes up. And as Maria said, it is a living document. We will be thinking about how we communicate to our members when changes are made. There's another question, which is um, that some of the guidance within CQ3 regarding responsibilities around assessment intervention and perhaps most relevantly at times when to cease therapy, will there be further support? in these areas. I think that links back to what I was saying earlier about some of the guidance with respect to clinical interventions are going to be elsewhere. We do have some clinical web pages now already on the website and we're looking at how we can update our clinical guidelines. So we hope that the clinical web pages will be somewhere where you can start. We've got uh, another question which is around um, whether the RCSLT website search function will link to items within CQ Live. I think the answer is yes, that's what we're hoping that it will do. We know that the website needs updating and that's something else that we're in the process of doing, but the current search button should help you to do that. There's a question around when will information guidance for supervision be published approximately? So it's a follow up to the question that was asked earlier. I'm not sure if we know the exact time frame for that, but it, again, if we're not sure on the webinar because we have a plan of work, we will be responding to some of these questions after the webinar and we'll be able to let you know. So another question about how the content from CQ3 is going to be made more easily accessible to people are starting out in their SLT journey. I hope that Penny has talked to you a little bit about the navigation and how you can find your way through it. Penny, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Thank you, Kamini. Once you're registered as a member of college, whether that's as a student member or as a, as a practitioner member, then you, you will have access to CQ Live. So 
I'm not sure. Is is the question about it says content from CQ3? CQ3 has has been archived, so CQ Live will be available and accessible to anybody who's registered as a member with college, whether a student or a practitioner. I'm not entirely clear whether the question is about CQ3 or CQ Live. Is it is it that CQ3 is going to be archived in some way? I don't think that was quite clear from the question, no. but I think basically um, I'm assuming that somebody's using CQ3 instead of CQ Live. But uh, it might be, uh, I think people are talking about the different conditions which were in CQ3 and, and not now in CQ Live. Again, oh. we have responded to that question already, which is that those clinical areas such as dysphagia or the other clinical areas that might have been in CQ3 or were in CQ3 are now elsewhere on the website. As we've said, CQ live is about supporting members to adhere to the standards set by the hcpc cq3 was about professional standards but actually did contain a lot of other content which really needs to sit in other elements of the website so that there is better um particular better interlinkages with the research center of the website so if you haven't seen that please have a look um, I can see that somebody's concerned about the fact that the clinical resources are not very searchable. As I said earlier, we're very aware that our current website is, it is difficult to search for certain things. Um, we are in the process of looking to see how we can update it. Um, if you have particular issues around trying to find content on the website, do ring up our um, information manager and he will support you. But the first place might be to start would be, sorry, sorry the first place to start would be to look at the clinical web pages side and also to look on the um, research centre. I think those are most of the questions because there are similar issues that have arisen which is about specific client groups and service provisions. Okay so we are now getting to the point where I think we've probably covered most of the questions and as I said if there are any elements where we haven't been able to respond to your question as part of the webinar, we'll be responding afterwards and we will hopefully be able to get the recording onto our website in about a week. So we do encourage you to share this with others and to start using CQ Live as a living resource. And as Maria was saying, to, to volunteer to get involved because this is about professional consensus. So it's very important that as a community of practice, everybody's involved where they can be. Now, thank you again to our speakers, Maria and Penny, and to all of you for listening in. We've had over 80 people listening, so that's brilliant. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.